what is globalization? I would like to believe that many of us have different definitions of what globalization is. Probably some don't even know what globalization is. So in this um, chapter, we'll be discussing some descriptions of globalization and some definitions of globalization. So here are some descriptions of, of globalization. First, it is a complex phenomenon that occurs at a multiple level. Why is it at multiple level? Because globalization is present in education, in politics, in economics, world history, media, and many more other aspects of human life in society. So globalization is very present. Also, it is an uneven process that affects people differently. It's an uneven process because it could be beneficial or it could also be detrimental. So some have good experience with globalization, some have negative experience to globalization. For example, for good experiences, some could experience international studies. So they learn from the best universities in the world. So some also have better experience in wireless communication, like very fast use of the internet. Um, be also beneficial because of globalization is the concept of trade. People are able to export and import products from the different parts of the world. Although there is a boon, there is also a bane for globalization. So some experience like human trafficking, living a poor life abroad, brain drain. So when we say brain drain, your country is export uh the people of your country is choosing to go to another country to work there because of money, leaving the home country um lacking of brilliant minds and manpower. Just like um what's experienced what's experienced by the Philippines right now, our best nurses, engineers, our doctors are choosing to go abroad because of greener pasture and yes so that's why that's a bad experience um, related to globalization here are some working definitions of what globalization is according to journalists and the media they usually view globalization as an economic process so they did not look at the different levels of globalization. It usually refers to the integration of the national markets to a wider global market signified by the increased free trade. However, for the academics, they view globalization um, as a much broader term. They view the process through various lenses that consider multiple theories and multiple perspectives. They refer to this as an interdisciplinary approach, and this is how we approach this in general education courses. So, in this course, regarding um, the contemporary world, globalization will be um, analyzed through different lenses, like in a historical perspective, political perspective, in the media perspective, societal perspective. So we'll be looking at globalization through those different lenses, not just at the economic level, although we will touch also on economics and globalization. According to Manfred Steger, it is an expansion and intensification of social relations and conscious across consciousness across world time and across world space. So those underlined words we will define them. Expansion, it means both the creation of new social networks and the multiplication of existing connections that, cross, that cut across traditional political, economic, cultural, and geographic boundaries. So globalization, um, it something refers to the, the connection between countries in terms of political, politics, economics, culture, and many other facets. So that's why there is an expansion. These various connections occur at different levels. So for example, social media. Um, we establish the new global connections between people and international groups of non-government organizations or NGOs are networks that connect at a more specific group. 
social workers and activists from different corners of the world. So these are various levels of expansion. Next is the concept of intensification. It refers to the expansion, not only that, but it's also the stretching and acceleration of this network. Not only are global connections multiplying, but they are also becoming more and more closely knit and expanding their reach. Ties are getting um, intensified, tighter because of globalization. For example, it is known that there is a strong financial market connection between London and New York. So, for example, in the fashion industry, so they would usually um, outsource or import export m m uh, clothes from each other each other's country. So that's one example. Even more, because of technology today, transactions are even more massive and faster. Because of the use of informatics, um, information system, uh, people can make bulk um, selling of products through um, these uh, computer networks and technology today. And it's easier just through email or something like that. It's not only in financial matters that you can find these connections. In 2012, when the monsoon rain floods flooded much of Bangkok, the Honda plant, making some of the critical parts, temporarily ceased production. This had a strong negative effect on Honda USA because the world now is getting more and more connected. And because of that, there was a huge impact on the sales of Honda. So, the third one is the way people perceive time and space. Stiger notes that globalization processes do not occur merely at an objective material level, but they also involve subjective plane of human consciousness. So, there is already um, a different way of thinking about the world right now because of globalization. For example, many people right now see globalization uh, see the world as getting smaller and smaller why because of our modes of communication now like for example in the internet right now if you're in the philippines and you want to talk to someone in the u.s it's very easy you just need to chat them or um, send them an email or voice call them through viber or other applications or even i don't know like Europe, like let's say in London and in, let's say you're living in Canada, it's very easy to communicate because of these um, communication applications like video chat, emails, and many more. Um, that's why we can say that somehow the world is getting smaller and smaller. Even our mode of transportation now, it's easier to travel now and faster, more convenient. Like before, if you would think about the time of, let's say, Magellan, something like that, or Christopher Columbus, it would take months to travel from one continent to another. But now, because of airplanes, you could travel, let's say, from the Philippines to the U.S. in just 12 hours. So that's why the world is indeed getting smaller and smaller. And then boundaries of different countries... Um, it's easier to cross these boundaries now. Like for example, among the ASEAN countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, we don't really need visa for these countries anymore because we are one um, association. So, as you can see, the world is getting smaller and smaller now. Globalization versus globalism. Um, I want you to know that there is a difference between the two. Globalization represents that many processes that allow for the expansion and int intensification of global connections. However, globalism is a widespread belief among powerful people that the global integration of economic markets is beneficial for everyone since it spreads freedom and democracy across the world. It's a common belief forwarded by media and policy circles. So, Globalism is very economic in nature. Let us now round up this discussion. So with our conclusion, globalization from the ground up. 
All this talk of large intersecting processes may be confusing. To avoid talking about globalization as a whole, so that you won't be overwhelmed, instead we will discuss multiple globalization instead of just one process. Again, it is a multi-level discussion. Anthropologist Arjun Apadurai said that different kinds of globalization occur on multiple and intersecting dimensions of integration that he calls scapes. Again, these are the different levels of analyzing globalization. So one of those scapes is ethnoscape. So it has something to do with global movement of people. For example, you mentioned about the diaspora or migration of people. So these are part of ethnoscape. Mediascape. It has something to do with the flow of culture, the integration of different cultures from one country to another country. Let's say, for example, um, Korean culture right now is very prominent in the Philippines, like the, the fa fangirling of K-pop uh, songs or Korean movies. So that's part already of mediascape, flow of culture. Next is technoscape, circulation of mechanical goods and software like about the circulation of machines, the use of certain software applications, the use of, let's say, social media. These are all part of technoscape. Next is financecape. Of course, from the word finance, it has something to do with economics and money. So it denotes the global circulation of money. And last is ideoscape. It is the realm where political ideas move around. For example, the concept of democracy, liberalism compared to, let's say, communism and socialism and how it spreads in the world. So that's part of ideoscape. Although they intersect, they, these various scapes have different logics. In this light, globalization can be viewed in various lenses. Political, economic, media, culture. So it can be viewed in various lenses. So while it is important to ask what is globalization, it's also more important to ask what is our being globalized? Is it the people? Is it media? Is it culture? Is it money? Is it technology? So these are good questions to ask when you talk about globalization. The structure of our lesson that follows will reflect this multidimensional understanding of globalization. And that's the end of our discussion. So... Please take note of your activity and please do submit on time. Thank you for listening.